This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we've gone through and covered the quite complex aspect of cash flow hedging. Uh, hopefully you've got an idea about how hedging and hedge accounting works. Okay, that's the key bit. You first of all need to understand what hedging is and then the accounting. And the accounting on your cash flow hedges, quite tricky, wasn't it? Okay, uh, if you're still struggling, don't start listening to me now talk about fair value hedges. Uh, I'd make sure that you're happy with the other area first before looking at this. I think it would just add too much uh, to your understanding and might make things that little bit more difficult to understand. Uh, if you're happy with it, let's carry on. You know, we've gone through and looked at cash flow hedges, yet you're happy with the concept of what a cash flow hedge is. It's when we have the risk of the changes in future cash flows usually to do with the purchase of an asset in the future and we're worried about the the value or the purchase price going up okay if that was the case what we did is we placed a bet on an increase in the price and then what would happen then is we would go through and as time passed any gains or losses on the hedging instrument would be recorded in other comprehensive income remember hidden away because nothing yet has been recognized to do with the purchase of the item. But then once the item is purchased, we go through there, don't we, and recognize the item. And then we go through there and take that gain or loss that's being accumulated in other comprehensive income and match them up in profit or loss by recycling the gain or loss across. Okay. Now we're going to go through and look at a fair value hedge. Okay. So what's a fair value hedge? Well, it's quite literal. A bit like you know your cash flow you know, cash flow hedge was protecting the value of future cash flows uh, here we're protecting the fair value uh, if we're protecting the fair value then that item has to already have been recognized doesn't it, it has to be within the accounts uh, it could be there it could be an asset it could be a liability okay uh, but usually uh, i say this usually we will talk about the liability as an example but usually it addresses the fear the value of an asset might fall whilst it's being held within the business or conversely uh, if you have a liability uh, the fear that the value of the liability will increase okay uh, because if it does you end up having to pay more don't we okay however forget about that for the time being uh, keep it look at the treatment much more straightforward isn't it uh, what you've got there is the gain on losses on both the instrument and the item go through profit or loss yeah that's what it says Okay, both go through profit or loss. Well, what's, what's exciting and what's different about that with your hedge accounting? Because on the derivative, that's what normally happens. The derivative is the hedging instrument, isn't it? So that's what normally happens. It goes through profit or loss. So what's the big difference? The difference is on the item. Okay, the item doesn't matter how you treat it normally. The gains or losses go through profit or loss. So if you're hedging the fair value of inventory, forget IS2. Yeah. Lower of cost than NRV. We're hedging now. So the inventory goes up in value. You've got a gain. And the gain goes through profit or loss. Which is not something you've normally done. Okay. Yeah. But now under hedging. They are the rules. And you have to stick to them. Okay. Don't you just wish the world of hedge accounting didn't exist. But it does. So. Uh, real life examples that you could come across. Uh, could potentially appear in the exam. Uh, you could have an interest rate swap head against the change in the fair value of a fixed rate loan. Uh, that could be a fixed rate loan that you have issued as a liability or if you like uh, a loan whereby you have been the investor in the debt. So you have a financial asset. Uh, the other one uh, is whereby you enter into a derivative, a forward or a future to protect the value of your inventory. The inventory is within your financial statements. It is designated as a hedged item, so now gains and losses go through profit or loss on that item. Kick IS2 into the touch, okay? None of that lower of cost in NRV that you've known for so long, okay? Yeah. Under hedge rules, gains and losses go to profit or loss. So let's have a just quick look at this illustration uh, to pull it all together. Uh, so it says Murphy Inc. has a five million bond in issue. So if you have issued a bond, you have raised finance. So you have a financial liability, don't we? OK, and that had initially a fair value at five million dollars. Because if you issue it at five million, you get five million. And that's its fair value, isn't it? But 
it's fallen in value to 4.9 million dollars at the reporting date now falling the value of a liability is a good thing isn't it so it's a gain so we have a gain on the item okay uh, the gain the difference between 5 and 4.9 of 0.1 million uh, to mitigate the risk, we entered into an interest rate swap uh, that was specifically designated as a fair value hedge to be able to protect the value of the loan. Not to hedge against the future cash flows of the interest. No, just the value. Okay. Uh, here it says the fair value of the swap has decreased, which you would expect, wouldn't you? you now, if you've got a gain on the item, you'd expect a loss on the instrument. And here that loss is 0.12 million. So here it's not going to be entirely 100% effective. Okay, There's some inefficiencies within the market, but blah, who cares about that? Don't worry. Too high level for this. So what have we got? Okay. Uh, so if you think about the fixed rate loan, okay, uh, so that there is your liability. Uh, the value of the liability has fallen from a fair value of 5 to 4.9. So you've got a 0.1 million gain through profit or loss. You know, if you had that loan, uh, and it was being treated at amortised cost normally, okay? Financial liabilities at amortised cost, that's your normal financial instrument rule, isn't it? Okay, well, pfft, nonsense, okay? Not now. You're protecting the fair value of it, so gains and losses go through profit or loss. On the interest rate swap, given you've got a gain on the loan, being the item, there must be a loss on the instruments, and that loss on the instruments is the decrease of 0.12 million. Okay, again, that goes through profit or loss as well. You can see that we're matching them up in the same financial statements and also in the same period. There wouldn't be any issues here to do with periods. Okay, uh, it'd be the financial statements that they could be uh, different accounting treatments. But here, uh, we throw them both through profit or loss. If that's the case, you net them off 1 million gain. 0.12 million loss overall you've got a net loss of 0.02 million is it there through profit or loss okay okay yeah uh there's plenty of examples in the textbooks but most of those textbook examples tend to focus on the inventory uh, so it's thought i'd spice it up a little bit and do something different to try and broaden your understanding uh, and help you through any exam question but hopefully now You've got an idea of what hedging is, what hedge accounting is, and how you can apply that to both cash flow and fair value hedges. So in the exam, yeah, the question may be difficult, but you have every chance of success if you follow what we've gone through and covered here.